Debugging embedded software is hard. With no screen to show output for print debugging and often only equipped with an LED to show signs of life, finding bugs in your embedded projects is easier said than done. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way for you to see your code as it ran on the chip, or to be able to even stop your code at a certain point to examine the state of the system? Enter Open On Chip Debugger, or Open OCD, a piece of software that allows you to use common probes like the ARM J-Link or the STM32ST-Link as a debugger, giving you the power to analyze your system as it runs. In this video, we'll be debugging an STM32 F103C8, better referred to as the blue pill. In my previous video, we wrote our first piece of C code, bare metal, that ran on the STM32, and today we're going to analyze that code using OpenOCD. Hit subscribe to follow along with me on our low-level journey into embedded systems. Okay, so here we are in our Linux debug environment. We are in the folder from our previous tutorial. I'll put the card here in the video right now, uh, where we've produced our blink led.elf and our blink led.bin binary. These are the programs that execute this code on our blue pill, where we blink an LED about every one second. It's a little slower than this, but it's pretty close. Um, step one, we actually need to sudo apt install open OCD. It's in the apt repo to get open OCD uh, installed in our computer. I've already got it, so I don't need to install it, but you guys should. Uh, step two, we need to use our ST tools. And again, we can do sudo apt install ST link to get those. Uh, and we'll do ST info tac tac probe to make sure that we have a ST link debugger attached to our computer. Once we have that, we can then start to invoke open OCD commands. Open OCD is a program that takes input in the form of files that describe to OpenOCD how to talk to the interface, which is the debugger that we're going to use, and then the target, which is the chip that we're going to debug using the interface. So what we'll do is we'll specify two TACFs. The first file is going to be a path to the stlink v2 configuration file here. That's basically going to tell the debugger how to talk to the stlink v2. And then we're going to use another TACF, and we're going to do target and then it's going to be stmf1x.config using these two files here the chip will know to go to the stlink v2 and then using the stlink v2 try to talk to an stm32 f1x and remember our blue pill is an f103 so this config file will work there is one slight change you may need to use if you're like me and you accidentally bought a cheap chinese knockoff of the chip um, I had to actually change this number here. This CPU ID used to be 1BA0. I had to make it 2BA0 because the chip ID that I have is different than the one that the ST-Link actually expects. You can also just delete this number in general and make it zero and tell the ST-Link to not expect a particular chip and just accept any chip ID that it sees. So once you've figured out that issue, depending on what chip you have or not, we can run open OCD with those two paths. Remember, so we have the one for the ST-Link interface and the other for the chip itself and hit enter. We run this and we see eventually we got a couple issues with clock speeds, but after that, it sees the chip using the ST-Link API version two and it sees a target voltage of 2.54. So now that we have this up and running, notice that it hasn't closed. What ST-Link actually did is it opened up a bunch of ports. We're gonna do netstat, tac tulpn, grep for open OCD. We're gonna do sudo here as well. So open OCD opened up three ports. One is for telnet and the other is for GDB. So what we can do here actually is opening another terminal. We can debug our project. We'll go here. What we're gonna do is we need to sudo apt install GDB multi-arc to be able to debug files that are multiple architectures in GDB. So GDB by default will only be able to debug Intel programs. We need to debug ARM programs. So you install that. I've already got it, so don't worry about it. Uh, once you have that, we're going to GDB multi-arc the blink led.elf. Now, right now, we're currently only on our computer, right? GDB is running as a local instance where we need to debug a remote target. The way we do that is we specify that the target is extended remote and it lives at localhost port 3333. What this will do is it'll tell GDB to talk out to OpenOCD running locally on our computer 
on this port and treat it as a remote target that is running this blink led.elf command. By hitting enter, GDB has now reached out to open OCD and we are now sitting at the reset handler because the chip is in a reset state because of open OCD. We're gonna type lay next a few times and that'll get us to the point where we can see the register state of the processor as well as the current line of code that we're in. We are going to set a breakpoint at main and then hit C for continue. Great, so now we are actually in the main function on our chip and we have a breakpoint set. It's not exactly at main, it's a little south of main, but that's not a big deal. And we can actually see each individual register and its current value as set on the processor. We then can do things like step, we take a step forward on the chip, give it one second here, it takes a fair amount of time. And we actually just stepped into the RCC library that does the RCC generation. Another thing we can do is we can set a breakpoint on a C line number to get the chip to stop at a particular point and use that to figure out what state the chip is in at that time. So for example, we can type B19 for break on C line 19 and hit enter. You'll see here we get a breakpoint that's set at that location. Now the processor is currently in a stopped state because I hit control C and it sent it a sig in or a sig interrupt. And we can actually use continue to allow the chip to go back into a running state. It'll run until the delay has occurred, and then when it goes to GPIO toggle our pin, we actually get hit on a breakpoint. That was breakpoint four. If we no longer want that breakpoint to be there, we can type D and then four for it to go away. Another thing we can do is we can do info registers to get a better idea of what the register state is in the processor. So we can see that R0 is this value in this case, R5 is this value, and so on. Also, we can see the PC or the program counter is this value here. And then one more important thing we can do as well is we can actually do memory introspection, meaning we can read arbitrary memory on the chip as we want. So we'll do lay next to make a little more room for ourselves here. Get out of here with this. Boom, 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 boom. We'll do refresh. All right. And then what we can do is do examine 32 words in hex at the address OX 800000. And you see now this is actually where the program counter begins for the ARM chip. And these are the instructions that live there. Using OpenOCD is extremely easy and pretty intuitive once you get your configuration files figured out. And using OpenOCD, you can debug remote ARM targets and figure out where your code went wrong without having to lean on LEDs or print statements. Guys, I hope you learned something. If you did, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, check out my merch store, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Take care. Thank you.